Hello, hello, hello. Welcome in, everybody. Time for another live lesson. Hope everybody is keeping well. Anybody dropping in for the first time? My name's Jeff. I'm a professional drummer based in the UK in Birmingham. Uh, we've been doing these live lessons now for the time that we've been in lockdown, which feels like forever, but it's got to be about six weeks now. Um, if you enjoy this lesson, then you might like some of the ones that we've uh, previously done. They're all up on my Facebook page if you go to the videos. Um, today we're going to be doing a lesson aimed a little bit more towards the advanced players um, but we'll start reasonably simple um, to keep everyone involved and then as we get longer into the lesson it'll get more advanced. It'll probably do about 20 minutes today. Um, apologies for being a bit late, I'll explain why in a moment. So um, yeah, we're going to be looking at some some concepts today that I was taught by um, a UK drummer called Steve White. Now Steve White's quite a big name in the UK actually, he's probably quite a big name around the world and um, I was lucky enough to have private lessons with him for a little while and this was one of the things that he, he taught me um, and the, off of that concept I came up with lots of ideas and I'm hoping that you guys um, manage to do exactly the same and so we're going to be looking at well to start we're just going to do what we normally do we're going to have a little bit of a warm-up because I'm absolutely freezing in here um, and we're going to talk a little bit about this idea of the parallel grid that's not the main part of the lesson it's just something to let people drop in um, and get things and get things going we're going to be looking at the Jim Blakely book Blackwell, sorry, book, book that we looked at um, previously. Um, page 40 again. I'll show you that in one moment. So, grab some sticks. It's going to be a lot easier with sticks. Um, if you're sat at a kit, even better. Uh, these videos get left up here at the moment. Well, indefinitely at the moment. I might take them down at some point. So, if you want to come back and watch them afterwards, then uh, feel free. Um, and I'm putting the notes up on the Freestyle Rudiments website. So you'll be able to go up there after the lesson and, uh, and get this notation. So say hello. Someone stick a thumbs up so I know you can all hear me. And uh, let's see if we can get a bit of a chat going. Oh, one of the other thing I should say is throughout the lesson, um, I've got a phone down here so I can see your messages. Your messages are coming up on my screen every year as well. So if you have any questions about the setup, about my techniques, about lessons, about what I'm talking about in the lesson, type them in and I'll do my very best to, to answer those for you guys. All right, let's get stuck in then. So what is this all about then, this paradiddle grid? Well, the idea of a grids is something that I've got taken from my days in drum corps, and it's quite a simple concept. I mean, it, it, it's it's got masses of uses. Though. I mean, I've even got a, a, bo a book all about just using these different grids, and this is one of the ones in the book, which is just taking paradiddles. And in this case, we're going to move one of what we might call an embellishment through the note. Now, embellishment could be um, an accent, like as in this case. It could be that we put a diddle in there on the start. flam or buzz or, or one of many things right so in this case we're looking at taking the embellishment of the accent and moving it one note at a time so the first one for most people is fairly easy um, the second bar though what you can see is suddenly it's a much more difficult one if you've done that before we'll go through this quite quickly I'll give you some feet patterns to do right if you've never seen that before that's going to slow you down here that's going to be breaks on for a little while so all we're doing is we're still playing paradiddle as in like paradiddle 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 we're moving the accent to the second note, so we're getting power a did or power a did or power a did or power a did or. I'll play a few for you. As always, we'll do that with a metronome so you guys can join in. I'm going to start mega slow. So for you guys who are a little bit more advanced, hang in here, right? It's going to get more difficult, but I want to make sure everyone at least knows what's going on. Even if you can't play it now, if you haven't been playing drums for that long, at least understand what's going on. Maybe there'll be a point in the future where you'll be like, oh, I remember that thing Jeff showed me. I'm ready to try that now. Um, I'm going to get the more advanced guys doing some stuff with their feet as well. Guys who can't do that, don't worry, just to play the hands, right? So if I put the metronome on at, what tempo are we at here? Let's go down to 60. I'm going to have the guys shouting at you, I'm afraid. I know you guys love this voice. So we're going to come in on one, three, with the first bar, just standard parallel. So the second bar. Again. Third one. So I'm now up to the diddle, so I'm going in. Two, 
So that's the basic grid. Now, what I always ask when I see someone that someone's asking me to um, to learn is, is time is limited, right? There's so many things that in a normal person's lifetime that you can you can learn. So you want to make sure that you're doing things that are actually got a, got a purpose. Now, what I tend to find is when um, when I get to someone at the stage of learning this, it, it may be that the fourth one is one that I would never play on the drums. And I can find ways of playing it, which I'll show you in a moment. But it may be that I never play it. And then you think, well, what's the point in learning it then? Well, what I tend to find is when you say learn paradiddles for the first time, um, the more ways you can find around the basic paradiddle, your knowledge expands. And eventually then the normal paradiddle is an absolute piece of cake to play. So when I play paradiddles fast, for instance, I'm not thinking anymore, paradiddle, paradiddle. I'm just thinking, no, 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 no. Well, how am I able to do that? Well, it's just because I've done so many variations around it that my brain knows exactly where each of those notes lie. Now, it may be that sometimes I will take the actual thing we're learning there and use it. So if I play one of the first ones or one of the second ones, so a paradiddle, then a paradiddle, I might get this. I might play one of the, one of the second bar and one of the third bar. I may find some way of using grooves in those. In the, so if I take the first and the second one. So what I'm doing then, I'm taking the accent on the first beat, paradiddle, and then I'm taking a left-handed paradiddle, but I'm putting the accent on the second note, paradiddle. So we get paradiddle, 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 paradiddle. It's just things that I then help me come up with more ideas, all right? Now, I'm not going to spend ages on this. It's just a warm-up into the main part of the lesson, but I want to give you a bit of a knowledge of how you actually can use these. So what I would do with this exercise, I'd just simply play it all the way through with a metronome. Let's try that once. Now, if I'm going to put some of my hard-earned time, let's call it, into practicing this, um, that's pretty boring, isn't it? It really is dull. So I want to find a way of making it more interesting, or I'm going to go, screw that, I'm going to play along with the song instead. So the way that I challenge myself is I do so with my feet. The easiest one to do is just do the same thing, but walking feet like this. Advanced guys, maybe try some Latin stuff. That last one's a bit of a bitch, right? So, so what I would do is I just whatever I'm working on at that moment. So maybe I'm doing Bione. Maybe I'm doing some crazy. I'm not going to do that one in front of you now, right? So kind of get the idea, yeah? So try and find as many things as you can to make that pretty dull exercise a bit more interesting. That way then you're going to get the knowledge required that when we do some of the stuff like we're going to do in a moment, um, this stuff becomes a little bit easier. Uh, one of the things that I liken it to is if you move to a new house, um, 
in a new estate or you go to a new estate you're somewhere you've never been the first time you go go there you usually sat nav and you find the house the next time you go there you you, you might use your sat nav still but you notice things oh there's a church there next time oh there's a church there's a pub oh there's a field oh that guy's got a drum kit and the next time you go might go down a different road because one road's blocked and eventually you get this big picture of the area so you couldn't get lost anymore I find that a little bit like that with things like paradiddles. If we just learn the basic paradiddle, we can easily get lost. If we learn paradiddles with moving the accents and putting different embellishments in, it's a lot lot easier for us to find our way around it. Okay, that's all we're going to do on that. Right? I want to get into this lesson because I think this lesson is quite a cool, quite a cool one. So let's chat a little bit about what we're gonna what we're gonna do. So if I go to, I got to get the right screen up to be able to show you this. So we're going to be looking at the Jim Blakely book again, and. The book is that one there, look, Blackwell. I was going Blake Leaf for some reason. So Jim Blackwell, right now, I was introduced to this by Steve White, as I mentioned, so syncopated roles for the modern drummer. Now the book is as dull as the, the front cover and the notation that's in it um, is mostly stuff like you're reading on that screen at the top there, look. So it's chart stuff. So it's the sort of thing that you might get in a big band chart or a jazz book and you can see it's just one, two, three, four, one, a two, a three, a four, a one. And so we'd make a tune up to it. Now in this case, we're going to apply 16th notes to that. So we're going to be playing one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. Now I want to make sure I don't lose him in here, right? So I'm going to make dumb this down a little bit for anybody who's thinking, uh, what's he talking about? So this this is what you might see on a chart in a big band for instance right so they don't necessarily always give you the drum parts you might get someone else's instrument part so you might see that and go well does that mean i just go bang 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 rest bang rest bang rest bang rest bang well you could do that right but the more advanced drummers what they do is they play notes around that while still doing the bang bang so one of the notes that we could choose to play on that would be eighth notes so we'd go bang ta bang ta bang ta bang ta ta bang ta bang ta bang ta bang in this case, what we're doing is we're playing 16th notes around that. Bang, tap, 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 bang, bang, tap, tap. All right, so bang, tap, 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 right? So literally what we're doing. So what I would start to do when I learn these or when I teach these, I get people and they feel a bit, I always say this to you, you're gonna feel stupid doing this, but sing a little tune when you're playing it. So when you're playing this part, literally make up a uh, 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 and so on, all right? So that first one then, we just played it with 16th notes. We then hopefully understand what's going on with 16th notes. Now, I'll put a metronome count 16th, but what you can see is what we've got underneath. Where we're going to interpret this is we're going to play paradiddles. And the paradiddle accent is always going to stay in line with the tune. Now that means that we have to move the paradiddle across to make it fit in. So the first bar is easy because it's all dammies, right? So we go. But the second bar is on the upstrokes, look. One and two and three and four and. So what I have to do, or what you're going to have to do, is you're going to have to put a little double in at the start and then the paradiddle, the first paradiddle, it starts there. So then how many paradiddles do we play? Well, we play two, three. Well, the fourth one we don't get to complete that because there's not enough room left in the bar. So you could start to think of those as a different rhythm. You could start to think of those as what we call reverse paradiddles, which basically goes did or para. But I don't want to, don't want you to turn out. Uh, that's the way I would think if I was playing on a marching snare because because in that instance, I'm not thinking musically. I can just think of like, one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a I don't really want that. What I want you hearing is a tune. So something like this. So have a little go through that now. I'll do that again with a metronome so you guys can follow along. And hopefully you can see what we've got going on there. So we've got one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and. So the second paradiddle in the bar is starting on the end note, right? Let's try it with a met. One, e, and da, two, e, So I'm gonna sing it first so you understand what's going on, right? So we've got paradiddle, 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 one, paradiddle, 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 one, paradiddle, 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 one, paradiddle, 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 Again, two, let's try and get two. some sort of feet going so the more advanced guys maybe do some Latin stuff. Mid 
it, guys. Maybe just walk. Beginners, just do the hands. Okay, so hopefully you guys are with me, right? If you're with me, give me a thumbs up. If you're not with me, I can go more in depth, all right? That's not a problem. So that's the first one. Let's do it in the Met, like I just said there, all right? So get your sticks. We're going to go to... One, and two, and three, and I'm going to push you guys a bit, right? I know you might not hang with this, but you might need to pause this. I'm going to go 80 beats a minute, all right? Three. Okay, Dusty, yeah, cheers for that thumbs up, man. Right, so, um, any questions, like I said before, type in, man. I'll do my best to answer, all right? Um, so what we then get with this book is we get loads and loads and loads of different patterns because that's a simple one, all right? So if we have a look at what's written there, like there's the top line. That's a scan of the book right there. So the second line, it changes loads. So we've now got one and two, three, four, one, two, and three, four. Let me change again. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four, and. And all we're going to do is we're going to go down all these different ones applying that same concept. So when we get a downbeat, in other words, a quarter note on the one, two, three, and a four, we play a paradiddle. When we get an, an eighth note rest and then we're playing on the upstroke, we're going to play the equivalent of a diddle, para diddle. So we move the paradiddle across. Now, when we then see this one, what that means is the first one that straight away is an up. So it goes diddle, para. But then we go straight back into a paradiddle. So that one's going to sound like this. And I'll go, if I go back to the other sheet, then you've got the option of kind of cheating a little bit and seeing the actual notation. Now, eventually, what your target is for this is to be able to read the top line here, not the bottom line here. Now, when you first learn it, when I first learned it, what I did is what I'm going to do with you is I, pr I first want to get my head around some of these. So some of them I actually scored out like that. I typed out the, the notation. And some of them I just kind of sight read uh, eventually and started figuring out, oh, I've seen that before. So I know that that's going to be the same same in this position. So let's take this first bar here then. Right, I'll put a metronome on. I'll play it a few times. Tempo up a little bit. And as I said at the start of the lesson with the uh, the paradox stuff that we were doing there, we want to try and find this a way, a way of using this on the kit and coming up with ideas ourselves off of the back of these. So if, well, I might use that as a feel. Like. One way I might do it, but I might try and think of other things. I might come up with grooves. I 
stuff just comes off and off and off. And the idea is then you take a simple concept, a simple pattern that starts off boring, slowly gets more interesting, then you put it to the kit and then you like you come up with some super cool groove that you play in front of someone's like, whoa, where did you make that from? Well, if, if you went back and told them all these steps, it's, it's pretty dull in it. So we just say, oh, yeah, I just made that. Okay, right, next one. So if we look to the right then, you can see that what we've got there is we've got one, then two, and three, four, and. So we're gonna get para diddle, then diddle para, and then para diddle, and then diddle para. So the first half and the second half are the same thing, that a down and up, a down and up. Hi Dave, how you doing? Here we go. And as I always say, obviously we can play speed. We can put it on the kit. Or in this case, because we're going to play it as a whole exercise in a moment, we'll do something with the feet. I'll do the walking feet with this one, all right? Let's try it together with the metronome. Okay, right now, I know some of this, I'm going to start going pretty quick now. I know that some of this is going to be too fast for people to get. But I am also aware that it gets pretty dull watching a YouTube video or a Facebook video when someone's just breaking every bar down. That's something that you would probably go and do on your, on your own in on your own pad, in your own drum room or whatever you're doing. All right. So, um, what I would do next then? So once I've got that first page, that first line, which was up here, look, and then I start to get the second one. I start to put them in together in a big long loop now. So what I might try and do now is play both of those bars together. So that top one is going to sound like this. Look, this is both next to each other. That was wrong with it. Let's do that again. I'm screwing this one up. So that last one was the up and then the up again. That's what's throwing me. So I might have to go slower actually. So I've got one and two, three, four, one and three. And one, and two, three, four, one, and three, and, and, and that one there's what's throwing me, that switch of hands. Okay, let's start to then try the next line okay so for guys just dropping in so today's lesson is obviously working through um some pa some paradiddle ideas when we're playing with with charts um if you've got any questions drop the questions in i love to know who's in here so say hello let me know if you've got any thoughts or any questions as we're going through um we're working towards being able to sight read um the sheet that i showed you a moment ago i'll get that back open in a minute where we've got the whole sheet of all the different reading all right but i'm going to go through maybe one more then hopefully if I give you the sheet, you guys can go and work this stuff out for yourself. So now look, we've got a downbeat, a downbeat, an upbeat, and a downbeat. So we're gonna go one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. So that's gonna sound like this. Bit of Latin. some drums okay next bar then top right hand corner we've got down 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 and then up I'll do this one slow for anyone who's just dropping in, so here we go. One, two, three, and four, 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 and four
one e and dot two and dot three and dot four e and dot one e and dot two e and dot three e and dot four e and dot one e and dot two e and dot three e and dot four e and dot one e and dot two e and dot three e and dot four e and dot one e and dot two e and dot three e and dot four e and dot one e and dot two e and dot three e and dot four e and dot one e and dot two e and dot three e and dot four e and dot one e and dot two e and dot three e and dot four e and dot one e and dot two e and dot three e and dot four e and dot one e and dot two e and dot three e and dot four e and dot one e and dot two e and dot three e and dot four e and dot one e and dot two e and dot three e and dot four e and dot one e and dot two e and dot three e and dot four e and dot one e and dot two e and dot three e and dot four e and dot one e and dot two e and dot three e and dot four e and dot one e and dot two e and dot three e and dot four e and dot one e and dot two e and dot three e and dot four e and dot one e and dot two e and dot three e so where it gets tricky then is the transitions from one to another. So when I try and play those two together, it's really easy to lose the sight of the downbeat. I'll try that whole bar, so we're gonna get this. This is the whole line, I mean. And the easiest, 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 I promise you way of getting this is to turn what's written there at the moment um, from a, oops, I screwed that out now by changing the, the screen um from changing it from a pattern written on a sheet of music to a tune so in my head now i'm going to be saying i know you can't see this notation right but that you'll be saying this. i'm gonna try and shout these mics won't pick up great right but i'll try and shout so i'm gonna go I play on the kit, I've got a tune in my head instead of all this right, left, 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 left kind of stuff going on. you'll see hopefully again from the notation then is I've made in bold the hands that I'm concentrating on that so I'm going right left 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 right left right 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 left 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 right left right now the what we're developing here then is our ability to turn to turn in noises in our head right for the want of a better word tunes in our head into actual things that come out on the drum kit now there's going to be nothing worse when you first do this than seeing a bar that's new when you're in the middle of a chart. Um, let's pretend that you've just had that come into the middle of a chart and trying to sight read it and at the same time figuring out so this will be a right, right, left, right, left, right, right, left. It's just not going to happen. It has to be the point where you literally see a pattern on and you can make a tune up as you read it. Now that sounds for some of you guys, I'm sure, far-fetched. Like, well, that sounds insanely difficult, but so was reading when you first started reading right when you're like two or three or four you don't go this is ridiculous i've got to see these squiggles on a piece of paper that someone else has made and make sense out of it in my head that's probably more difficult than learning to read read music is it's just a case of doing enough repetitions of it so as i said this all comes then from the book the the jim blakely book jim blake well book why do i always call him blake right jim blackwell book right now i use this book all the time and we've done a couple of lessons on this one so far. I'm gonna see if I can get it so that you can see maybe the first page of this. And what I'll do is I'll start to play through it and hopefully that'll inspire some of you guys to go and try it um, yourselves. Right, I'm gonna get rid of, in fact, I'll tell you what, if I do the other split screen, it's gonna be small, I know, right? I'm, you're gonna to have to bear with me on this, right? So that screen on the right-hand side is showing you um, a page of the book. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reinterpret that page as paradiddles and I'll talk through it once and then I'll do it properly on the kit so what I've got then top line we've done that right so I've got one two three four and two, and 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 second line one and two three four one and three four third line one two and four one two three and fourth line one, and two, and three four one two, and and four fifth line one two 
Let me just check. You can see that one. one two, yeah, you can see that one. So one, two, and, 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 two, three, and. Now, all of those patterns there, when you first learn it, it's going to be difficult. I'm not going to lie to you. But after a while, I have no idea what rhythm I'm playing there. I know that sometimes I'm playing paradiddle diddles. I know sometimes I'm probably playing double paradiddles in there. And if I learn it in that way, the problem is it would sound like that when I played it. I, it would be like a, a machine. Paradiddle, paradiddle, para, paradiddle, para, paradiddle, 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 para, paradiddle. I don't want to sound that. I want to be more musical with that. Now, we may try this in a moment um, uh, like this. Oh, Dusty just commented on something. Now, I need to check. It is. It, I did get it right, wasn't it? Blackwell, Black Lee. Someone check. Someone check for me. I think I've got the wrong, the wrong uh, title on my sheet, which is what is confusing me. Okay, right. We'll check that in a moment. So... If I try and play the whole thing now, then, let me show you what it's going to sound like. Let's do walking feet to begin with, all right? I'll put a metronome on. Now, what I'd like to try and get you doing now is with your finger, just follow along. Bear in mind, if you're on a phone, you're going to swipe right and left. Just follow along and see if you can follow out, and I'll try and put the accents on the tom so you can see the pattern. If I screw one up, I'll probably keep going, actually. Right? When I learned this, one of the lessons I was taught was don't stop, because in a big band chart or a band situation, when you stop, everyone knows you screwed up. So I'll keep going, unless I'm miles out, right? I'll start for the metro number, it's actually easier with eight notes, right? I'll do start with So did you manage to follow along? Follow those accents along? Hopefully some of you have got that, right? Um, I'll do it a little bit faster so you can see where we might go with it. And I'll maybe I'll have a go at seeing if I can keep the Latin stuff. The Latin stuff, I find it's easier, faster, because I have to think about my feet so much then. But that's just me being a bit lazy, really. Really, I should sit and practice it until I can do it at any tempo. Let's try it. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and okay, one. one and two and three and four and 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 so you can see it's easy to screw up you've just got to keep going right or if you're on your own in the shed and you want to be screwing up because i tell you i'm screwing up because as i see comments come up i think about them too much and i'm thinking like oh, am i doing this right and, and so i have too much going on my head but but really, that's a poor excuse, right? If you practice something enough, you can do it while thinking of other things. So what I've got written on the screen at the moment, then, I'm going to put that sheet up on the Freestyle Rudiments website. Just the first one. I can't give the whole book out, right? Because you should really go and buy the book. If it was a book that was a bit easier to get hold of, I probably wouldn't even be able to put this up. But it's a bit of a... It's difficult, let's say, to get hold of this book. Um, and I'll put a link to that book in the description as well. Right. Have we got any questions at the moment? Now, what we always do at the end of these sessions is we... I'm going to take this a little bit further, I think. Well, I'm just going to show you it rather than teaching you it. But if you've got any questions on anything, the way these sessions work best is when people ask questions about completely different things and we go off on a bit of a tangent for 10, 15 minutes. So if you've got anything, start typing in now. 
Don't be worried if it's a stupid question. There's no stupid questions, right? If you've been playing drums for two weeks or 200 years, right? Chuck the questions in now. So where else would I go with this? So what I would do is I'd start to try things like swinging it. So I might try this. I want to make a groove out of that, so maybe... Because I just, Dusty just said, you can get this at Southern Percussion, actually. I'm interested. That's interesting to know, because I, when I tried to buy this book, um, I came back from a lesson with Steve White, and I was like, well, I'll go get that book. I'll just go on Amazon and buy it. It wasn't there. Go on, um, what was it called? Bookroom.com. It wasn't there. And I had to, I found some little website in the middle of nowhere to buy it from. So if you guys um, dig this, then go check out the, um, go check out the uh, Southern Percussion website. They've got it on there. Okay, awesome. Well, I've got some questions coming in. So lessons on tuning, perhaps. Yes, okay, yeah, tuning lesson would be great. Do you know what, tuning's a, 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 an interesting one because it's one of those things that I, I find that most drummers have got a bit of a worry about. Now, most of the things that on, I think we practice most on drummers, if you guys are a little bit like me, are the things that you've got a little bit of worry you're not doing it correct. So um, I don't go and watch paradiddle videos on YouTube because I know I play paradiddles correctly, right? If someone said to me, oh, you're coming tuning i don't like your tuning very much i'm gonna be on youtube the next day looking up tuning and it's there's certain things things on drums that we've got there's a bit of a stigma to touch with now um i would be more than happy to do a tuner lesson and I, I will i will do that for you and uh, the thing that i would pass a bit of knowledge on to right about tuning now is keep in mind that, that it's very much that you'll hear one person will go oh that's an awesome sounding time and someone else will go jesus christ that's awful and then someone will see this moon gel and go like moon gel on his drum is pathetic and someone else would be like, one moon gel. How come you haven't got three, man? It sounds so much better. And so it, it's kind of like, um, it, it's a bit of an open subject, but yeah, I'll certainly t do maybe do the do's and don'ts of tuning. That might be something to, to look at. So yeah, definitely, Mark. Um, my phone has given up the ghost of trying to keep up with the, with the um, oh no, it's come back. Tony Lee Fisher. Okay, thanks for watching, my man. So uh, he likes it, says professional reformative. Awesome, good feedback. Um, and I think I've just seen a question say, uh, nice swung paradiddles, yeah. You can't beat swung paradiddles, can you? So for any guys who were wondering what I was doing there with the swung paradiddles, any of the paradiddles can be used in this context. So what I could also do is I could take, it, it, for the guys who already know this, I could take inverted paradiddles, these. And I could do the same piece of notation to practice that. Swing it. That was a bad swing. Do it again. I've never done that before, right? But you get the kind of concept from it, right? I could. So that one, for anybody who's a bit unsure, that's that top line there. And we soon start to come up with up ideas then, once we use that as a bit of a, um, a template, a place to start. I'm sure we work with any paradiddles, right? I've done it with paradiddles before, all sorts of things. Okay, we've got any other questions? Come on, we need some more questions. So anyway, I'll quickly tell you why you're thinking some questions, why I was late. So um, we sold our house about three months ago. So um, worst possible timing of ever of this virus. But um, we sold our house, but we haven't bought a house. And so we've been waiting ages for a house. We know we want to move and the house has come up and we've been and seen it today. And um, it's 
perfect. But the, one of the sort of things that we've said when we, when we moved this house is I need to have a slightly bigger studio. So this studio that you're looking at me in at the moment is in my garage, just convert a gar converted garage. So I wanted a bigger studio. And this garage has got like, a, this house has got a dream garage for me, right? A nice big garage. And um, so I was like, yeah, this is awesome. And we go and see it and the garage has got a big fat wall halfway down the middle. So I'm just like, oh, and my wife, my wife's like sold. Like she's like, oh, I really like this. I really like, I think we should like, you know, think about buying this. And, um, and so I spent all morning trying to figure out, can I build a studio which has got a line kind of halfway down the middle and to build around it. So I got a bit carried away, didn't realize the time. So that was why I was late. So for those guys who uh, have private lessons with me, who will be watching this, um, we're still here at the moment. Maybe a few months, we might find somewhere else to, uh, to, to call home. Um, well, on that subject, actually, anybody who's interested in, in Skype lessons, particularly at the moment, you get the same experience you get in here. So we'll obviously, you know, we, we can do whatever you want to work on. Um, I can do lessons just on a practice pad. I have a lot of guys who just want to work on hand stuff. Um, but if you want to do uh, Skype lessons, then get in touch through the website, jeff-fry.com. Um, or drop me a message on one of these one of these meters, social medias that you're watching at the moment. And as I said, you get the same you get the same experience as this. So we've got um, a, a full out, a close up view. A little bit further away, we can see my foot. Uh, the split screen and that split screen there. I've also got just the above. Um, while I, if you've got anything out of this lesson, one thing I always ask don't mind is if you could go over and check out YouTube if you're not already watching on YouTube. Um, I've got a site on there with loads of lessons, reviews. Um, if you could go and have a look at that, if it's something you dig, then maybe subscribe to that. And if you could share this, so if you guys who are watching on your phones, stick your phones the other way around real quick, press share, um, like. If you hate it or don't get anything out of it, go watch someone else. I'm just kidding. Um, so we've got these lessons going on throughout lockdown. So at the moment, I'm on lockdown for probably at least another couple of months over here. They're not letting us teach. So um, Tuesdays, we're doing lessons aimed towards the beginners. So I wouldn't say I'm really doing beginner content. It's not like you can just turn up and the first time you've ever you know, picked up a pair of sticks. It's just I'm talking in language that beginners maybe would get a little bit better. Thursday is a little bit more difficult. And then today we tend to do the advanced stuff, which is why in this lesson I haven't broken it down so much. Okay, have we got any more questions? If we've got nothing, I'm gonna shoot off, but I'm more than happy to ask you, answer your questions. I appreciate you coming and watching anyway. If you do dig this, let me know because it is a bit of a, uh, a strange experience. At least when I get someone who's uh, either pays to come and have lessons, then they're sat in front of me um, and they've had a reason for coming to see me. Um, with these lessons, it's really hard to see whether people are actually enjoying it or not. I can't even see how many people are logged in from sat back here. So the numbers help, right? If there's 5,000 people watching you, then you know you're doing a good job. If there's three, then you, you kind of question yourself. So, all right, well, I'm gonna shoot. I'll see you guys all again, hopefully next week, same time on Saturday or maybe um, a little bit earlier, a little bit later in the evening, I should say, on the Tuesday or the Thursday. So look after yourselves and uh, see you soon.